Greetings Nerdy List aficionados and welcome back to Top 10 Nerd and we can't stop won't stop. We talked about heroes that got pregnant, now it's time to talk about the villains. That's right, super villains have kids too. Although when it's super villains you know there's drama built in. So I'm excited, my wheelhouse is this, I live here now, quality content. I'm Sasha and these are the top 10 super villains who got pregnant. Let's get started. Number 10, Harley Quinn. She's gonna go down here cause some feel she leans more towards the anti-hero side these days, just ignore the bodies. However, in a couple of alternate timelines, she has gotten pregnant by the Joker, and in both, she's given the baby up for its own good. In the Injustice verse, she would find her way back into her daughter's life without initially revealing who she was, just happy to be able to contribute and then there was Old Lady Harley. Yes, DC did an Old Lady Harley after the resurgence in popularity of Old Man Logan post the film Logan, when people learned that it was similar and reminiscent in tone of that comic, though they oversold its similarities between the two, just a little bit. So in Old Lady Harley, her pregnancy was a big reveal. She had gotten pregnant by the Joker and had not been able to even look at the child or attach because of his father and of all that had occurred in that relationship, and so left the baby at the hospital. Hospital. This would set the baby on a path of revenge against her for abandonment. It was all very dark and sad. It got way less zany than advertised at the end there. Number 9. The Huntress. The first one from the Golden Age. So this is Paula Brooks, who was renamed as the Tigress via retcon later on. She was married to fellow supervillain the Sportsmaster, and in comic canon, that's where it ended. But enter Young Justice canon. Here she would have largely the same backstory but would also have it tweaked to be the mother of two children, the villain Cheshire and the hero Artemis. Her relationship with Sportsmaster had deteriorated after she had suffered an injury that left her paralyzed and made her not want to live such a dangerous life of crime anymore, especially now that she had children. This created a whole new dynamic for the characters in the Young Justice universe. It was a cool character addition, and Paula Brooks was ripe for it because she had a lot of gaps in her backstory, ripe to be filled with drama. Number eight. Hella. So in the comics, Hela got pregnant, and it was by Thor. But before you flip a table, let me explain. So in the Marvel verse, as in myth, Hela is Loki's child. So they're not siblings there. Calm down, MCU fans. So here's the story. Thor went down to her realm to try and get Valkyrie brought back to life. And when there, Hela told him that she wanted a son, and engineered a situation where he ended up being trapped there in Valhalla. Or rather, her realm. Darkness. And he ended up missing his life so much that he agreed to her terms. Provide his sperm. And this is God time, so no gestation period here. She gets pregnant and gives birth that same day to a child, Modi Thorson, who was evil and aged quite rapidly, so Thor killed him. All in a day's work for the God of Thunder. Number 7, Ink. Heading over to the Batman Beyond verse in the DCAU, that being the DC animated universe for this villain. Ink is a mercenary, a woman who has undergone dramatic genetic mutation to be able to infiltrate pretty much anywhere. Her body is malleable and occupies a semi gelatinous state and is dark navy blue to black, hence her name, Ink. Years before, she had had a daughter who she had given up, but she ended up needing to call on her when she was injured, and her daughter had grown up to be a bit of a waste roll with a lot of credit problems. So she used the opportunity to trick her mother, and she got her the wrong chemicals, so she would end up dissolving. And hence her daughter would get access to all of her money, her entire fortune. But because of this, she would end up earning her mother's wrath, because Ink wasn't really gone. Cold. Ice cold. Number 6. Lady Shiva. Lady Shiva is just a great name to say. Sandra Busan debuted in Richard Dragon Kung Fu Fighter number no. 5 in 1975. She would start off here, but find herself growing more and more associated with the Batman mythos. So let me tell you a little bit about this. We need to build up. So Sandra had a sister, Carolyn, and together they moved to Detroit, after coming from a village under the control of the League of Assassins. She and her sister would practice martial arts in Detroit, and be seen by an assassin, David Kane, who noticed that Sandra was holding back against her sister. So Kane would murder her sister to unlock her full potential. Sandra would hunt him down, only to discover it was a League of Assassins trap, and that he was a member. When fighting, she realized that Kane had been right. Her sister had been holding her back. So she decided on a trade. She would give Cain a child he could raise if he spared her life and let her develop her skills to their full potential. So they would become lovers, and she would bear him that child, a child named Cassandra Cain, the girl who would find herself taken under Batman's wing as Batgirl and later Black Bat. It's all interconnected, it's all coming together. Number five, 
Orca. We're going to be talking about the Grace Ballin version of this character. So Orca was a kind student who was doing experiments on spinal cord tissue regeneration using Orca spinal cord tissue. I think you can see where this is going. This would turn her into an Orca and she could turn back and forth. And so what's a girl to do? Go on a crime spree, of course. She goes after rich people and jerks, kind of. She's taken a bit of a Robin Hood approach, but still this puts her in conflict with Batman. He doesn't stand for that. But she didn't get pregnant in the main verse, but in the Injustice verse, where she was a member of the Suicide Squad alongside Killer Croc. It was meant to be. They're both aquatic themed. Come on, it writes itself. They're dating and she's pregnant with his baby. True villain love. Give the people what they want. I don't even know what that is anymore. Pregnant lists. Number four, Cheshire and Catman. Cheshire was blackmailed into joining the Secret Six, a team of villains hired for specific ops. Missions that sometimes geared a bit more heroic, depending upon who was hiring them. So kinda like the Suicide Squad. While on this team, she would take up with Catman, who got a new lease on life in this series. People are taking him seriously. And she would become pregnant. But unlike her other child, who we will talk about later, she would keep this child, a son. She purposely got pregnant with this child as a way to escape the blackmail that was keeping her on the team. She was being blackmailed by Mockingbird. She would move to the Himalayan mountains with her son, Blake. However, her son would be kidnapped and Catman would go on a murderous rampage to save him. But he would discover that he had been given to a loving childless couple and so he would decide that the child would actually be better off there than with him or the mother. So he would go back and tell her that their son was dead so that she wouldn't know to look for him. Depressing. Number three, Mystique. Mystique is a mother several times over in comics to some core characters. She would have Graydon Creed with Sabretooth. And while on her Raven persona, she would marry Baron Christian Wagner and give birth to Nightcrawler but not by Wagner, as he was infertile and also an unsatisfactory lover. So she would begin to have affairs, and one of them would be that she would seduce Azazel and get pregnant by him. Hence, Nightcrawler has such an extreme appearance. He would be believed to be a demon, and she would have to flee, but abandon Nightcrawler in the process. Mystique is also the adopted mother of Rogue, whom she raised with the great love of her life, the mutant Destiny. Mystique lives her life, all of it, and children come as they do. She has a bit of a different relationship with them because she is so long lived. You would attached to people differently after a while. Number two, Talia Al Ghul. Talia is the daughter of Ra's al Ghul and the mother of Damian Wayne. The current at the time of this recording, Robin, or at least the most recent. The tale of the conception is one of controversy. So the idea of Batman having a biological son first originated in an Elseworld story. And when they decided they wanted it to be main continuity, they got Grant Morrison to write it. But he misremembered this first original story and thought that Talia had raped Bruce, slipping something into his drink and then sperm jacking him basically. So that was what became canon. Though it wasn't acknowledged as problematic for a while, and in some cases still isn't. This is why you have jokes made, for example, by Damien in the animated Hush film, he's the product of the rape, telling his father, the victim, to cover his drink. High comedy. So DC would try and retcon this to make it consensual, especially when they realized it had all been a mistake. But it just keeps coming back. It's that piece of canon that just won't die. It even survived retcons. It's powerful. Will fans ever let it die? I don't know. I will if they will. Retcon it properly. And number one, Cheshire and Roy Harper. I'm sure a lot of you knew this was going to be number one. It's iconic. The relationship between Cheshire and Speedy that results in Leanne Harper, beloved child character, who would become a recurring supporting cast member of the Titans and the Teen Titans, and just a sweetheart to have around. Cheshire would give Leanne to her father, believing that he could give her a better life than her, that she could grow to her full potential. She would grow up loved by superheroes, only to be killed in Cry for Justice as a shock kill to prove that things were really serious. And she's gone, because the idea the idea has always been that superheroes with children are off-putting to the allegedly super young child audience. Demographics. Sure, Jan, I want to see those numbers. So those were 10 super villains who got pregnant. Let me know if there's any I missed down below. I'm Sasha. Thanks so much for watching Top 10 Nerd. Please don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe and hit that bell notification so that you never miss a vid. See you again soon. Bye.